There's a reason why Papa Bones isn't afraid of bears, snakes, and lions. These are powerful animals, but they have patterns. Things that don't have patterns, that don't follow rules, that's what I'm afraid of. Tonight's scary story is about a paranormal prison. It exists within our walls. It has no patterns. It follows no rules. It was about about 12, 15, when I, you know, got to the Johnson County Community Health Clinic. You know, we called it the JWC HC. And I was there, you know, because I had an appointment. And I set this thing up weeks ago, just a little routine checkup or whatever. And it wasn't, you know, a new place for me. I've been there a whole bunch of times before. Now, the place had a weird kind of feel that just took you back to the old days. You know, it's like it was a location from my childhood, you know, something like that. It's like, it just always felt like I've been there before. And I could never, like, really put my finger on exactly what the feeling was or where it came from, but I just knew that I felt it. Now, when I walked in... I felt this feeling of just like deja vu sweep up over me. And, um, the, you know, they had them fluorescent lights and they had that little hum going and the floor had this white tile and it was just a, like a little raggedy, raggedy like beige paint on the walls. And I think that it was a TV mounted up in a corner, you know, a, a little small flat screen and it was playing a little PowerPoint presentation thing. And it had ads up there and events that was being held by the clinic and stuff. Now, I passed a little empty waiting area and um, a small area of the main room with magazines and stuff. And children play things and little blue cushion chairs and stuff. And I come up on this lady at the front desk. And she was sitting in like this bluish gray office chair and um looking at a spreadsheet on the same like windows xp <laughs> desktop that they had back since like man when they had xp that was back when i was in high school man so i got up to the lady and it was a sign in sheet on the counter so i started filling out and um i told her i had an appointment with dr peebins and she was like what time and i'm like 12 30. and then she started typing something on her keyboard and she said, okay, okay, um, Gary Johnston? I said, yeah, that's me. She said, okay, I'll tell the doctor you're here. Please fill this out. Now, she handed me a clipboard, and, you know, just your basic little, you know, form to fill out and stuff. So I walked back to that waiting area, sat down, took a seat, and uh, started filling out the form. Now, I'm about halfway done filling in my information, and I slumped back in the chair a little bit because I really ain't getting no sleep the night before. And I was up, uh, we had a nice little party, man. I was getting my party on last night. But anyway, you know, so I sat back and I seen something real weird, man. It's like, you know, my head never hit the wall. You know, and really it felt like my head went through the wall. So I'm like, you know, I'm expecting to lean back and feel some, you know, the wall. And all of a sudden, I don't feel nothing. So I jumped up looking crazy. And I'm looking at the wall. And I don't see nothing. You know, not a hole in the wall. No dent in the wall. And um, I'm like, man, I know. <laughs> like, you know, I leaned back. And I and the wall right behind me, so I should have hit the wall. And I'm looking at the wall, and the wall here, so why didn't my head hit it? And I got it, man, and, and heads, I got to look, my head's so big, it don't make no sense, man. I'm talking about, like, I ain't never even been able to wear a hat. I ain't never even seen a hat I could wear. Every time somebody got a hat, and I try to have <laughs> it on, it's like a, it's like a, a, a man, it, it ain't even, 
It's like the little thing that the Jewish people be wearing, man. It's like one of them things on my head, man. So, you know, I don't know what size hat I wear. I got to figure that out. People be like, well, you ain't an 8. You, I guess I'm like a... Somebody told me I might be like a 12 or 14. But, you know, it's... I, you know, I take pride in my big head, man. That's why I'm so smart. And my lady told me when I wake up, my head be two, three times bigger <laughs> than it usually is. <laughs> but anyway, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's going on, man. So I reach out and touch the wall, and my fingers went right through the wall. So I jumped back on some scared stuff. I'm like, man, what was that? My voice got all high, man. And I thought, you know, so... I gotta be tripping, so I reached and touched the wall again, and the same thing happened. Again, my fingers went right through it. Now, all of a sudden, I lost my balance and tripped and fell straight through the wall. And I fell like face first onto some dirty tan carpet. Now, once I got back up, I realized that I was in a whole nother room. Not really a room, but it was like more like a, a set of rooms, like each room led to another room but it was all one big room and um and all because the doors there were no doors it was like each room was just open man you know it's kind of like how in the office space and everybody be in the office building and they got their little computer they little what you call them them little cubes they be sitting in or whatever it's like they you know the room is like that it was just a bunch of many spaces <laughs> whatever man but anyway and um the walls was just covered in this like tan patterned wallpaper man and it and it stank man and the walls was kind of grungy and stuff and it was like um and the stank was like the uh, old um like a mildew stank like when you you know something get wet and you don't get it out and it just stay wet and then you go find it a couple of Weeks later, and that junk just got that mildew smell. That's what it smelled like, man. And um, I turned back around. I tried to put my hand back through the wall, but it wouldn't go back through. So now I'm like, man, what's going on in here? Man, I can't. So I'm, I'm really finna, I'm, I'm low-key finna panic, and I'm trying to stay cool. But I'm really getting ready to panic, man. So I turn around and look back into the room, and there wasn't no windows, no doors, nothing on the walls, just the, you know, stinking wallpaper or whatever. And it was just completely empty, man. Like, the only thing, you know, it was like a, a plastic blue school chair was the only thing I could see in there. So now at this point, the only thing going through my head was just not just regular fear. Like, this was... This was ultimate super duper fear. <laughs> this was, this was fear, fear. This was so, I was so scared that I can't even put it in words, man. That's all I can tell you. I can't even put it in words, man. And I just kept, my mind just said, bro, you gotta get out of here, bro. You gotta get out of here, bro. You gotta get out of here. And, uh, it's just like in my head, just over and over, man. And I started running through the rooms, man. Just, I'm moving and groove. Now I got lost. I can't remember what room I first came in. And, then, and I'm just moving to each room. And each room looked just like the last room. And I'm sorry. And I couldn't find no way out of nothing, man. So now, now I start thinking like, you know, is this, this is it. I'm finna die. I'm finna die up in this place, man. I'm finna starve the freaking death up in this place. And... My plan, I had them, them wings. I went and got some wings from this place. You know, I'm down here in ATL, but they doing them just like Chicago, man. I had the wings. I was going to go over there and get me about a, a 50 piece out of myself, man. And, and now I'm sitting up here thinking I'm going to starve to death up in this place, man. And it had to be. I'm just, and I'm like trying to reason with myself, like, bro, it got to be a way out of here. You know, I wasn't just going to be left up in here forever. It's impossible. Ain't no place just just a forever place like this, man. You know, somebody going to see and I'm gone. And, uh, and you know, the doctor should be looking for me. You know, something going to happen. But ain't nothing ever happened. Nobody ever called, came or nothing. And, you know, I had my phone on me. But um, 
of course, you know, when you're in a horror movie situation, you don't get no signal. And when every time I tried to call out, I just got that that like uh, some kind of stupid little beeping type noise, like like the you know the no signal noise or whatever. And now, just when I started to just like I was finna break down in tears, I heard something from a little bit away. Some footsteps, man. But not no normal human footsteps. You know, it was like a, I don't know, it it just sounded, the the pattern wasn't right. You know, it wasn't like the way humans walk. It just didn't sound like one, two, one, two, or whatever, or, or one, two, it was weird, man, just off. Almost like they was dragging their foot some, and, and the, so now I'm like this thing, whatever it is, sound like it's dragging his foot, and I can hear like a a gurgling, you know, like a like a type, you know, like a a, a gurgling zombie type noise, man. So now I look. I ain't gonna say that I. I ain't gonna say I ran. I run it. <laughs> I run it, man. I run it like ain't nobody ever run it before in the history of running. Then I was moving through them rooms, left and right, hitting my elbow and stuff. Keep going, hit my jam, my toe, everything. I'm still moving. Nothing making me stop, man. So now. I'm starting to feel myself get tired and you know, I'm just running, trying to push through it, push through it, push through it, push through it. But eventually, it's only so much, man. You know, the human body only built for so much. So I finally just kind of fell out and I was still trying to crawl and just do the best I could, man. It seemed like I was running for days, man. And no matter where I went, I just still kept ending up in the same rooms over and over, over and over. You know, at least it looked like the same room. I couldn't tell the mugs apart, you know, not really. And I sat down, man, I'm just defeated, man. And this feeling of fear just continued to just be all up in me, man. I started crying, man. And I knew I was going to die up in here. And I'm still here. And I haven't left from up in here. And I didn't just... I didn't just accept my fate, man. Matter of fact... You know, those footsteps come every now and then. And I realized that if I just run for a little bit, he'll leave me alone. Sooner or later, I ain't going to have the energy to run from that man no more. And I'm going to have to face him. And when I do face him, I'm going to beat the dog mess out of that boy. What a great story. Special thanks to YouTube channel Hood Horror for writing and narrating it. If you want to hear more of his great content, you can find his channel in the pinned comment below. So eventually, Hood couldn't run anymore, so he hid around a corner and waited. When the creature following him turned the corner, Hood looked into the eyes of the most vile, evil, disgusting creature he'd ever seen. (laughs) It was his boss, there to fire him for being late. Hey, that's not funny. I tried to think of a few jokes about unemployment, but none of them worked.